Over the weekend, we obviously had the very, very sad news that our former captain and centre forward, Kevin Campbell, had passed away. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by another former Everton captain and someone had a fantastic relationship on and off the pitch with Kevin Campbell. It is Don Hutchison. Don, listen, thanks very much for taking the time to, uh, to have a little chat with us. Uh, I just wish it was under much happier circumstances, but thanks for joining me. Oh, that's OK, man. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, I see the two number nine shirts behind you and they're mm. looking good and Kev would have filled them well. I mean, before we get on to like this bit, just when you arrived, oh, sorry, when Kevin arrived at Everton at that time, you two did seem to just strike up this relationship and I know speaking to him on men and I've got to send you a little video actually that just found the clip yesterday when I was going through some stuff about you that he said but you did just seem to have this synergy almost straight away it was like a telepathic thing it was weird but it was beautiful to watch as an Evertonian but it was uh, what was it like for you? It was exactly the same Um, some partnerships just sort of click and Kev was Kev's movement was incredible, you know, over like a short distance, five, ten yards. And he used to just give you a look. Mm. And if you'd seen him and you made eye contact, you knew exactly what he wanted, and which is quite rare, really, because normally when you're on a football pitch, it's normally verbally. Mm. You know, like normally players tell you, I want to come short, I want to spin in behind. Yeah. We sort of worked on a little bit. The only thing we really worked on, and we didn't really like practice every single day on it, mm. but it was like a conversation. It was like a literally a twenty second conversation, and me and Kev both agreed we'd play on the opposites. And what that means is every time Kev comes short, he mm. wanted it in behind. Right, and okay. Every time in behind, he'd come short. So I knew whatever his first movement was, he was going to do the opposite. So which makes it like unbelievably easy to play with and for. But it was it was more so the 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 chemistry that we had away from the pitch. It was obviously mm. there and very easy to see from a fan's point of view, and it was like beautiful to play with him but it was more it was more the guy I think away from the shirt and what he was like in a dressing room like you know like one of the kindest guys you've ever met in your life he had a sparkle in his eye a twinkle massive smile lovely manner about him I never ever caught I have bad days you have bad days Mm. sometimes it can be a little bit snappy I never caught Kev on a bad day never ever Mm. Well, I mean, obviously, when he come in, Don, we were struggling a little bit, to say the least. We were uh, we were in a bit of a, a patch like that. What, like, we, you know, obviously getting to know him over the last few years is you do you do realise how he, you know, he does light a room up, and he is always he was always positive, no matter what. You know, I talked to him about Everton, and when we were struggling, he'd be like, "We'll be all right. We'll get this. We'll get that. And he'll look at it this way." And he was always glass half full. So that kind of energy in the dressing room, does that pick the lads up? Did that pick the lads up? It does, because Howard used to say, because obviously, you know, Walter, Walter had uh, had Kev. Mm. But what? But Howard used to always say, um, whatever result on a Saturday, if we win, we get beat, he went park it. He went park right. it on a Saturday, do not bring any mopey faces into the training ground on a Monday, because if you mope around on a Monday, training will be rubbish. Mm. You'll mope around a little bit on a Tuesday. Wednesday, you'll have a day off, and you'll only start recovering on a Thursday. Mm. So Howard was like, get rid of the result on a Saturday. Kev was nearly exactly the same. Kev, he? I've heard Kev say it many a time after a game, like, lads, that's done. That result's done. Forget about it. Let's come in Monday morning, different mindset, different frame of mind. And sometimes, Baz, he didn't really need to say it because, as you said, you know, you could lose 5 nil. And Kev would bounce into training on a Monday morning, like happy as Larry, like wanting to see everyone, wanting to joke everyone. And he just made everything like easy and comfortable. I don't think he ever put any of the lads in like a stressful situation. That was the type of guy he is. Glass half full, exactly right. Mm, Absolutely brilliant. And, you know, like I said, just the last bit on like the playing side, but you two did have that telepathy. I mean, I I always go back to like the... The kind of like the West Ham game when we, uh, you know, we beat them six nil and he got his hat sick. You two with, you know, leads the four four. These these little moments where you've threaded those balls through and he's finished. But it was that telepathic thing. It was great to see. And I know, he, he and again in this little clip I sent you, he, he says himself he was devastated when you left. Like we were, we all were as Evertonians. You know, it was a, it was a head scratcher and we did lose that creativity. But while you were there together. You know, it was it was great to see, and and he was a brilliant finisher, wasn't he, Don? I think sometimes he doesn't get the credit he deserved, but he was a really good finisher, Kev. 
But when Ian Wright and Wrightley played together in their early days at Arsenal, mm. <clears throat> those two were like a force of nature, weren't they? Yeah. I don't think you the front two like them two. I mean, just like, you know, battle-hardened, you know, warriors. But at the same time, Wrighty was a brilliant finisher. Kev was mm. like a really great finisher. Mm. You look at the strikers that apply their trade now and they've got like a certain type of finish. Kev and Wrighty, and, and we talk about Kev, he had the lot, you know, he had the dink finish with his right mm. foot. Go around the goalkeeper. He was physically strong. He was great in the air. Scored headed goals. Wasn't too shabby on his left side neither. Mm. His link up, how smart and intelligent he was, was another part of his game that was really, really um, important to us because you need a striker, especially when you're not seeing too much of the ball. You need your number nine to get hold of it. Mm. And like you know, if you build like a profile of the modern day centre forward, I would imagine attributes wise, he'd probably tick every single box. Mm. Definitely. I mean, I've seen like obviously a lot of players speaking about Wayne Rooney. Don't you know? Talked about how much he helped him, and he was great with you know David Moyes said he was great for me when he come in and he helped them. And he was you know it, it, if he'd have played in better Everton sides, he'd have scored even more goals. He did play in a few struggling ones and and did the job yeah. as well. And that that's the way you look at it. You know, brilliant. You know, nine Could goals been... in eight games in his in the loan spell, and he got twelve and thirty one the next season, nine the next season while he was fit. It was only. The knee injury, he got a bit of a knee injury, which curtailed him a little bit. But overall, yeah. Everton's first black captain as well. I mean, outstanding at that. What a, you know, that was a, a great thing, and he changed the course of that as well. And I know yeah. that was something he treasured, but that was fantastic as well. Yeah, he could have been a coach, you know, could have been a manager because he had the mannerisms of him. He was very calm, and he had a look. By the way, you'll know, Baz. He had a look mm. about him where once you let him down, he'd give you a look. He probably didn't need to tell you because, like, the face mm. on him. You know, like, oh, like, you know, I've let the big man down today. Yeah. But he was one of the, uh, whatever he plied his trade in, the media side. I mean, you know, when he was doing some of the adverts were absolutely <laughs> hilarious. It show, I mean, I remember one when he's having a right go at Liverpool. And yeah. He's talking about the this, that, and the other, and the aggressions in his face, like mm. in a funny way. Yeah. Such a guy. But like, you know, when you stand like the human right in front of you and you go, what do you want? What do you want from a human? Like build one. Mm. And you, you look at Kev and you go, he ain't a million miles away from being perfect. He had his way, give you a look if you let him down. Nine times out of ten, he was perfection in his mannerisms and his attitude and his character and the way, I think more importantly, I think everyone, especially at Everton Football Club, more so I think than any other football club that I've ever played for, it's all about how you treat people. Mm. Whether it be key lady at the training ground, whether it be Alan Myers, as you said, whether it be anyone like yourself or connected mm. with a football club, it's about having relationships. And Kev would have been at the forefront of that. He was an amazing guy to deal with. I mean, obviously we we were just talking off camera there. We we learned of his uh, of him becoming unwell. The, the the sort of relationship we had with him, you're absolutely right. You know, he was yeah, he was great. Scored goals for Everton. You remember that? He, he was you know kept us up in massive parts of our history and all that. But that's just a little part of him. The the thing I'm remembering is his smile, the way he yeah. treated people. He always yeah. had time for us. He was on with us regularly, speak to us, message us. Never, ever, ever did I, when we were with him, did I ever see him not smiling or he was, you know, he just came in and lit a room up. And it's yeah. a rare thing. I, I said the other day, I remember him as a good footballer, but an even better human being. And those, you know, people like you just said, Don, you have ups and downs, and of course, everybody have got stuff going yeah. on in their lives. But with with Kev, you wouldn't have known. I, I don't think you would have known where the stuff was going on in his life because he was so so sort of bubbly, and he was lar he was a larger than life character. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And just looking at the number nine shirts behind you, uh, Mo, who works for the football club at the hierarchy, mm. um, he asked a group of former players, and he contacted me about a year ago, saying like, "Would you like a brick?" Um, mm. in the new stadium with your name on. I went, oh, I mean, absolutely, like, you know, over the moon. And I I just said, just keep it simple. Just put, you know, former Everton captain, Donald, it's my pleasure to play for Everton. And when I got the news about Kev the other day, I texted Mo and I just said, listen, I don't know if I'm being a little bit cheeky um, or if it's a little bit of a stretch. I went, but it would be amazing if you could put my number 10 brick right next to Kev's number nine. And he was like, mm. if we can make that happen, we'll try our best. And, you know, that's... I've played with millions of guys. I've played with, like, you know, the Liverpool boys and Palo mm. de Canios and, you know, amazing characters and super characters. But I don't think I really ever had a bond the way I did with Kev. And we mm. didn't have to phone each other. We didn't have to text each other. You know, you might just get a message off him once every couple of months or I might mm. message him once every couple of months. But 
when you were in his company for the first time, because obviously I live in London and I work around the world. I'm over in America at the minute working on the Euros and you don't get to see the lads as much as you like to. And when I come up to Goodison, I was up for the um, for the Liverpool game and I seen Kev and I seen a few of the boys, Graham Stewart, etc. And mm. you just a smile on his face, man. It's just like, just electric, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Just like the pos- like you, you could literally like, you could literally half touch him and just feel the vibe off him. <laughs> yeah. Just know how positive he is. Like, just, that's that's the most important thing, Baz. As you said, though, you know, when you when you play football, a lot of fans, rightly so, will look at the numbers and look at the stats and look at how you played and how you re- represented the club. But it's how you treat your family and it's the family members and these close ones. And you know, you've seen the outpouring. I mean, mm. you know, you, you, we're, we're losing a lot of lads over the years as we get older. But my days, like the outpouring for Kev over the last three, four, five days, has been like quite immense. It, 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 it's. I mean, it's. It was obviously devastating news the other day. You know, you were you were devastated like all of us. And you're right, though, Don. You look at what's you know what's out there from everybody else. People, you know, seeing Ian Wright. There's a lot. There's just been so many to to start naming. I'm seeing Mark Crossley. Uh, you know, was uh, put something out yesterday that he was gonna have a a drink for Kevin. And there's just been so many people, fans. We've had it on our. You know, we've had we, a couple of things where we talked about him, a couple of shows dedicated to him and fans of other clubs saying, what a, what a fella and I'm not an Evertonian, but what a lovely man. And obviously done a lot on Sky and the Dickie Bows and all that. And that was him. He made, he made Dickie, Dickie Bow Thursday, you know what I mean? And uh, that was that was who he is, isn't it? And I guess that as the days go by, you, you just, you should be remembering the person that he was rather than I know it's sad and it and all of that, but there's also got to be well, I feel like it anyway. There's a the celebrating his life should be more, should become more to the fore because he was a he was an amazing human being, Don, wasn't he? Do you know what we should do while we're on this show now? We should start a campaign from now till the first game of the season and get all the fans to wear a dicky bow first game of the season. <laughs> I'm just get, it. Let's just start a campaign, let's get it rolling. <laughs> Social media, all the Everton fans turn up with a dicky bow on. For day one, for Kev. Yeah, absolutely. That'd for be him, mate. that'd be good, wouldn't it? Show it a, a dicky bow yeah, day. Everton should have it, really. Dicky bow, whatever. A dicky bow sort of honour for Kev because and none of us will look as good as he did in it. By the way, let's be right. No, let's have that oh, bit. Man. Let's have there's that no, bit right. Oh, there's no chance I could pull that off. <laughs> Listen, Don, thank you so much for taking the time. I could, I could, you know, go on and on about it, but it is obviously a very sad time and really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your memories and just giving us a little insight into what Kev was like, you know, away from the football pitch and, you know, such a tremendous fella. Listen, all the best with the Euros. Like I say, thanks so much for your time. Love listening to you, top pundit, and uh, keep it going. Anytime, pal, my pleasure. A huge thank you there to Don Hutchison for taking the time out of his busy schedule, joining us from America, where he's out covering Euro 2024, to give us his, uh, like I said, his thoughts and and feelings about Kevin Campbell. So, uh, awfully sad moments for everybody to do with Everton Football Club. But a huge thank you to Don. Thanks for watching. See you later.